Hello and welcome to another quick demonstration of the HP UBA product or the User Behavior Analytics uh, solution. So uh, without further ado, I will jump into doing the demonstration and run you through a typical scenario that we're looking for, which is uh, looking for behavior anomalies, uh, but actually looking at frequency spikes uh, and looking at activities around that. So uh, first off, let's just jump and uh, display a little bit more data into our dashboard to understand a little bit more what's going on. So very quick overview of what we're looking at here. We're looking at high risk users. We can see there's a number of uh, users and uh, identities here and we can see some risk scoring. Uh, the UBA solution actually uses that uh, composite risk scoring mechanism to highlight the highest risk users. In this case, it's a particular individual. Uh, an identity behind is called Harry Ogwa, uh, and is scored accordingly. Now, we'll actually dig into some of this and what's actually going on. But the important thing here is that we're not just looking at usernames. We're looking at the identity behind it. So we're getting the information from typically from something like Active Directory, and that's what we're doing here uh, as part of this uh, mechanism. So we can actually see that Harry Ogwa has scored a very, very high scoring here. So he's the highest risk user that we've got here. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to dig in a little bit around that. So we'll dig into the unique employee ID here. That's what we set as a unique key. So we'll just dig into that individual uh, uh, that we have here. So we can see this information here. We can see some further data around cost centers, titles, job roles, and so on. Uh, we can see some other information around a regular full-time employer uh, and so on. Uh, we can also show that there's some further contact details, so manager and so on. Now, a lot of this data we could pull from something like Active Directory, absolutely. Some of this additional data is also pulled from uh, external HR systems where we can piece this data together to, to display further information of what's going on. Uh, we can even show some things like employee history. We can actually see that they're, they're set to be terminated at a later date. Uh, we can also track all the history as well with this particular user uh, and, and individual here as well. So we can see all the changes that have occurred. In fact, actually, there's an awful lot of changes. Uh, it's actually going to track all that as well and understand it. Uh, but notice the behavior profile here. We'll come back to that one later. So we've looked briefly at the actual individual there. But what we can do is let's let's understand what this, this composite risk score is. What does it mean? So we just put, hit the little plus there and we can see there's a number of things. So what we're seeing is that there are a number of uh, overall uh, activities that have triggered a, a creation of this risk scoring and it's all added up to give that master score. Now as the threats increase, as the number and scoring and so on increases, that score actually increases as well. But what we can actually see here is these these particular three events here indicate that there's a higher than baseline activity and it's around some Windows activity actually on three different in this particular case that's his username because we just saw that a second ago on these particular uh, Windows hosts that we've logged in. So uh, naming convention for a demonstration here, it just literally says an Active Directory domain control and then a number that's accordingly. Uh, so uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll dig into those in a second. What we also should understand is we can also put some static data in here as well. So we've actually created what we call some watch lists. As part of those watch lists, we can actually show that we've added some information, some further data around the individuals in question. So we can see that uh, we've actually unfortunately giving them a, a bad performance review. So that's a, a factor we need to consider. They are to be terminated uh, and they are to be a terminated employer uh, after a particular date as well. So. We're updating some of this information and we can see how that's triggered accordingly here. So that's useful, but what we're focusing on here is, is frequency spike. So that's what we see here. Let's just dig into that a little bit, a little bit more detail. So this has occurred an awful lot here. So we can see there's a huge amount of information that's occurred with regards to these individual hosts and these individual activities here. So we can see uh, higher than frequent uh, frequency higher than baseline behavior. So actually let's go into this a little bit more detail. So we can see that on a monthly basis we have a baseline calculated figure. We, we're calculating baselines uh, on a number of aspects here with regards to uh, individual user activities by server, by individual uh, actual identity, as well as all other activity, individual events as well. So we're, we're calculating that, but we're understanding that this particular user has a typical baseline of about one, uh, and then uh, typically logging in or logging out maybe once uh, in a particular day on average as a baseline. But on this particular incident, they actually did it 74 times. So we actually, again, we can dig into further on that one, see the violations that have occurred and actually see the underlying events that have triggered it. So we can see this is a security uh, event from uh, Windows. It's a 540, so it's a successful network logon. We can see the username that's actually been involved. Uh, we can see the other uh, Windows event data accordingly, so we can scroll across and see all that data. 
even actually going down into the actual event data and seeing the underlying arc site categorization so we can understand it. Uh, this is quite easy because it's Windows, but if it was a system that wasn't Windows, we'd be able to look at that categorization and understanding accordingly. So we can see there's a number of events there that have occurred, so we can actually look at those accordingly. So this is actually quite interesting to, to understand that we, we've seen that uh, there's a, a typical baseline that's set for this particular user and suddenly they speak, uh, they're, they're spiked up above that. So that's what's triggered that. It's occurred uh, in this particular case, if I jump back here, it's occurred on, on a number of different uh, workstations or, or servers here as well. So this is a real indicator that something very suspicious. It would be unusual for, uh, for example, somebody to log in and log out 74 times in a particular day uh, and therefore this is uh, maybe some sort of automated uh, malware uh, or some sort of mechanism is actually uh, mining and trying to get access to various systems. Uh, but if you remember, I, I mentioned earlier on about uh, some of this information with regards to the uh, baselines. So we can actually, if I just jump back to uh, Harry Ogwa as a user and look at their behavior profile for a second, we can see some of this data and understand what's going on. If you remember the, the server we were looking at there, the activity on that, so of course we're tracking it on everything that he's accessing and attributing back to the individual as well. Uh, but if I should just click on that particular server because that's what we're looking at, it's going to graph out the data and show us. So on average we're seeing some overall activity that's occurring uh, and we've set a baseline and that's been calculated accordingly. But on this particular incident it's had a massive uh, increase in that, that uh, transaction volume. So if I actually just show this transaction and baseline that's occurring on these particular systems, it's typically around about 13. Within that we've defined a couple of clusters so we can see that there's one active cluster and that's what the uh, min and maximum frequency and overall uh, number of intervals that we've defined and that's valid but we can also see that some other suspicious data that's being picked out by this overall aspect and of course we're doing that on all the systems so again if I click on the other one we can see there's another spike of activity so we can see that there's some very unusual things that we need to do some investigation uh, around this individual and of course that's why we'll jump into the individual uh, workstation to do uh, the workbench uh, around investigating what the actual events they've done uh, and what they've accessed within those systems accordingly and of course we can start to pivot around that data. Uh, but I just wanted to very quickly show that we are tracking that data, we are setting the baselines, it is doing it automatically and understanding those and when there is an unusual set of activity based around that breaking of that, that, that baseline we are going to be then calculating and increasing the risk according to that that means that we should be doing some investigation into that individual uh, to further find out what's going on. Anyway, that's a very quick uh, run through the demonstration and thank you very much for your time.